Here's a hot makeup tip for you. Don't put poop on your face. Hello Internet, I'm KB Shin, and this is Wonderlust. Humans have been wearing makeup for thousands of years. Sometimes we just want to feel beautiful and confident. Sometimes we want to cover up the zit that's big enough to get tagged on Facebook. And sometimes we have a not-so-secret longing to be a sea monster. Modern makeup is by no means perfect. Many brands are filled with unpronounceable chemicals, they're often tested on animals, and nothing you do looks like what you saw on Pinterest. I don't think I did this right. But hey, now we live in a golden age of beauty. Now we can ask ourselves things like, can I pull off this lip color? As opposed to, which is worse, getting a tan or having uncontrollable facial tics? You would be horrified to know what people used to put on their skin to try and make themselves beautiful. Are you dying of curiosity? Sure you are. So here are 10 awful ingredients found in ancient cosmetics. Number one is fur. Several cartoons and plays written in the 1700s suggested that women used to wear false eyebrows made out of mouse skin. There's not a lot of hard evidence to support this, so to be fair, it could just be a makeup urban legend, like alligators in the sewer. But many of these plays are satire, and there has to be an element of truth in order to make them satire, so... What we do know for sure is that in ancient Greece from around 800 to 500 BC, all the hottest women had unibrows, but if they couldn't grow their own, they'd create a fake one with oxen fur, painstakingly gluing on each individual hair for a more natural look. I'll be ready to go when I'm finished. Can't rush art, you big crybaby. Number two is spit. The Roman Empire was a place that really valued free labor and slaves. If you were a wealthy woman of that era, a particularly desirable slave was called a cosmeta, a name that means to anoint and paint. Yes, forget purse, dogs, and coffee enemas. A true Roman status symbol was owning a human being whose sole purpose was to put makeup on you. An actual makeup artist on YouTube will tell you that a good look comes from a good foundation, but an ancient Roman foundation wasn't a lotion, cream, or powder. It was made from saliva. Cosmeti, the long eye sound makes it plural, would often chew on cosmetic ingredients before applying them to their mistress's skin. They would also let ingredients dissolve in their mouths slowly before carefully scraping out the whole mess and then putting it in little jars to use later. Ew. But hey, maybe you could show passive resistance by horking a big loogie into one of those jars. Just tell them it's lip gloss. Number three is leeches. Looking pale and tragic has been a fashion statement for centuries. But if you can't fake it with makeup, pick up some leeches. Noble women of the European Renaissance often put leeches on their ears as a means of draining the excess blood from their faces. They literally drained the color from their cheeks that comes naturally only to slap some back on in the form of carmine or cinnabar. Seems like a bunch of unnecessary steps now, don't it? So if that wasn't icky enough for you, the ancient Romans used to make a potent black hair dye out of mashed leeches and vinegar. It had to ferment about two months before it was ready to use, and yeah, it smelled awful. Remember, this was ancient times. Anybody who wanted to look hot was usually willing to put stuff on their bodies that made them smell like a funeral pyre that was built out of kimchi and dirty diapers. And the list really only gets worse from here, so can't say I didn't warn ya. Number four is blood. Kind of a short leap from leeches to blood, now isn't it? Right around 100 AD, women all over the Roman Empire would use a mixture of blood and sheep fat to paint their fingernails. <laughs> In ancient Egypt, most people who could afford to do so shaved their heads and wore a wig. Back then, it was just easier to do that than have to contend with head lice over and over and over again. But if you were going to keep your real hair, you could keep it shiny by using a deep conditioner made from the boiled blood of a black bull. Geez, try saying that five times fast. How do you even determine the wattage of bull's blood? Some people also drink ox blood to try and improve their complexion. Following that logic, wouldn't that mean that ancient Egyptians were vampires? Well, it would explain the tombs and the fancy coffins. Number five is urine. I warned you it got worse. 
The chemical urea is a natural skin softener and humectant, which helps skin retain its natural moisture. But up until Friedrich Waller, a German chemist, discovered how to create it synthetically, it was easier to just collect it straight from the source. Ancient anti-aging masks and skin lightening treatments were often made with urine, usually from a horse or a mule. However, during the Victorian era, they supposedly figured out that the most potent skin rejuvenation treatment came from human babies. I don't need to spell out for you how it got collected, do I? Ammonia, another chemical commonly found in urine, has a natural lightening effect. Ancient Romans used to clamor to try and get urine from the Portuguese because they believed it to be more potent than their own urine. Um, hi? Can I see the raw data for this? Plus, unless you had a Portuguese person on tap, it'd be way too easy to get ripped off. People probably did get ripped off. A lot. And I bet when they found out, they were pissed. I'll be in my room. <laughs> anyway, the ancient Romans used this fantastic power pee as an ingredient when it came to bleaching their hair, or, um, whitening their teeth. I'll take a pass on that, thanks. Maybe I'll just give up drinking so much coffee. I'll never let you go, my love. Number six is Belladonna. From the Italian for beautiful woman, Belladonna is a member of the nightshade family. European women in the 15th and 16th centuries would use the juice from the berries as eye drops. Belladonna contains atropine, a chemical that dilates the pupils. Atropine is now more commonly found in medical grade eye drops and can make a trip to the optometrist just a little bit disorienting. But back then, there was no standard recipe for eye drops and they weren't checking for glaucoma. They used these drops to make their eyes look wide set and sparkly. You can probably imagine how this might have gone. It's Frederico looking at me. I literally can't tell. Maybe I'll get his attention by looking really sexy while I eat this apple. Regular use of these eye drops could cause irreparable damage or even blindness. Not to mention the berries are highly toxic. Eating just a few of them can lead to hallucinations, uncontrollable vomiting, renal failure, and death. Number seven is mercury. When you think of mercury, you usually think of the liquid metal that's inside every thermometer in T1000. But in this case, the culprit is a mercury-based ore commonly known as cinnabar. It's usually found in alkaline hot springs in places where there are active volcanoes, and its bright red color makes it look very appealing. It's so pretty. I kind of want to rub it on my face! Cinnabar was a common ingredient in blush and lipstick all over the ancient world, from China to Rome to Mexico. Another variant was mercuric chloride, which was used in the 17th century to get rid of freckles, and consequently all the skin underneath them. As it's absorbed, it immediately starts wrecking the healthy tissue, over time causing disfiguring scars and permanent nerve damage. Mercuric chloride is so toxic that just one gram is considered to be a lethal dose, and it was often mixed with other toxic ingredients that gave a woman a look that was literally to die for, such as... Number eight is lead. Nope, that's actually graphite. Lead's properties make colors more deep and vibrant, Ancient Egyptians mixed lead in with their coal and eyeshadow to get their distinctive look. In Greece around 3000 BC, women started using white lead to try and make themselves look paler. During the Renaissance, women would paint their face with ceruse, a foundation that was mixed out of white lead and vinegar. Dude, what is up with my lighting? I look like I'm wearing ceruse right now. Queen Elizabeth I was said to be a big fan of wearing ceruse, so much so that her signature look was called the Mask of Youth. If you cake on enough of this stuff, it'll hide any imperfection. And cake it on she did. By the time she finally died at the age of 69, it's said that her makeup was painted on an inch thick. Constantly exposing your skin to lead creates painful blemishes and scarring. So women of the time would wear this makeup, which would scar their faces, which they would then cover up with more makeup, which would cause even more painful blemishes and more scarring, which they would have to cover up with more makeup. It's the circle of unrealistic standards of bodily perfection, and it screws us all! Lead poisoning causes hair loss, uncontrollable facial tics, 
muscle paralysis, memory problems, infertility, seizures, coma, and of course death. One notable fatality from Bled Cosmetics was Countess Maria Coventry. As a woman with a title, she was kind of a big deal, and she loved dressing up and having parties and looking pretty, but she loved wearing makeup so much that she died of lead and mercury poisoning at just age 27. Hey, that was a different time. We know better now. If we found out that somebody was constantly being exposed to lead, we'd pull out all the stops to make sure they got the help that they needed. Right, Michigan? <laughs> Number nine is arsenic. By modern standards, arsenic is considered the weapon of choice for murderers who don't feel like breaking a sweat. But back in the day, it was ridiculously easy to get your hands on some. Seriously, you could walk to a corner drugstore and pick yourself up a box of arsenic. But besides causing, well, death, it did have some appealing beauty benefits. In the Ottoman Empire, In the Ottoman Empire, the ideal woman was as hairless as a baby bunny. So, to create that look, women used a depilatory cream called Rusma. It was a mixture of lime juice and orpiment, which was an arsenic byproduct. It was applied all over the body before they took a bath and used a bronze tool to scrape off any of the remaining goo. If Rusma got left on for too long, it could cause painful burns. Okay, heads for hot wax, tails for chemical burns. Best two out of three. Newspapers in the Victorian era would advertise a product called arsenic complexion wafers. Eating them was supposed to give you lovely pale skin, clearing up acne, freckles, or any other imperfections your skin might have. But you were still eating arsenic! What's really f is that by the time these ads were in circulation, people already knew that arsenic was bad for you. It was already well documented to be a dangerous ingredient in things like dyes and wallpapers and of course the aforementioned murder weapon. They just reasoned that a little bit wasn't going to kill you. This of course follows the same internal logic as, look I know you have a nut allergy but the article said that a mask made out of Nutella will give your skin a healthy glow. Come on, just a little bit, it's not going to hurt anything. Like any addictive substance, people can build up a tolerance to arsenic, and they have to take more of it in order to achieve the same results. Regularly abusing it can lead to hair loss, diabetes, deafness, kidney failure, a variety of cancers, and of course death. This has gotten really depressing. I feel kind of crappy. Speaking of which, number 10 is poop! You had to know this was coming! Underneath their trademark white makeup, which hopefully is not filled with lead, the geisha of Japan have perfectly flawless skin. What's their secret? Well, they've had something that's been part of their beauty regimen since the Edo era, a poop facial. Called the Uguisu no Fun, this mask is made from the droppings of a particular species of nightingale, the Japanese bush warbler. Uguisu no Fun, more like Uguisu no thank you, that's all I'm saying. The way it's supposed to work isn't exactly clear, which kind of led me to conclude that this facial was invented on a dare, but apparently it does work. Buguisu no Fun is starting to pick up steam in the Western world. Celebrities like David and Victoria Beckham swear by it. As you can imagine, it's not exactly easy to <clears throat> harvest. In the US, you can expect to pay upwards of $180 for the privilege of having bird poop smeared on your face. This isn't what I had in mind when you said, let's get sh**. The mimosas are good, though. Hey, you made it! And nobody got poisoned! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. I'll see you next time. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> that was horrific. <sighs> the things I do for comedy.